Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane. And today I have for you a 2 versus 2. Yes, indeed, it's been some time since we had a 2 versus 2, but, well, a lot of good 1 versus 1, so I wanted to go out with those. But this is an actually rather exciting 2 versus 2 on Duclair. Yes, indeed, Duclair, right there by the river sign on the other side of it, just as the Germans were retreating from the whole disaster of Falaise. <coughs> And of course, Duclair is a rather open set of territory. Yes, there's this sort of hilly area right here where there's some sort of redoubts and all defensive positions, some bokais and all sorts of bits. And right here, but at the same time, though, if you look at the rest of the map, it's actually surprisingly open. I mean, lots of clear terrain, lots of open lines for fire. Yes, there's a bit of right there, but nothing huge. And there's some buildings spotted around, but they're. Well, here and well one there that's nothing really hugely impressive nothing that really decides and most fighting will usually take right fight round there because well it's the shortest point between the two bases but also because most players actually apparently seem to have a real problem fighting over here in the sort of more hilly terrain and so they tend to pretty much avoid it which usually means that one place pretty much just take it and then all of the fighting will happen over here so, nice little detail there, at least I hope you found it interesting. And of course, let's go have a look at our players in the East. It shall be Insane Hixi as the Wehrmacht. And joining him shall be Insane Sanjia. Insane Hixi and Insane Sanjia shall combined make the first SS Panzer Division. And who shall be opposing them? It shall be... Muspelheim R and Muspelheim, basically meaning well, well, two places of Nordic mythology. One is this sort of place of fire, and the other is the Norse way of hell. So there you go. Shall be rather interesting to see how these shall pull off, because but then again we are seeing the British, and yes, also the British with some visuals, but not of the half track infantry pack. I do apologize. Although that would have been nice. But British, American, oh, let's say... 2nd Armored Division and... Oh, 11th Armored Division making the way, hunting down the Krauts, the Jerry's, the Hun. So right there, after this slightly bumpy start, let us get right down to things. What shall the Allies be doing? What shall the Axis be doing? Apparently, well, this is interesting. Insane Hixie is going for the five pioneer start, which is something you usually see in one versus ones. But apparently, he's sort of hoping you can pull it off. Trouble is, though, the five pioneer start is usually something you do use against the British player because, well, you can usually use this to gain a lot more map control and territory in front of him. Thing is, though, if he runs into the American, the American will pretty much just place a boot down on his throat and kick it. So that of course can be a bit of a problem right there, it can certainly find themselves a lot more sort of halted and less useful. And meanwhile, Mr. Sanjia with his kitten cat and his panzer grenadiers are sort of heading northwards. And yes indeed, SS Badges. About it. More panzer grenadiers are arriving, heading northwards with the kitten cat while Hexi is sort of sticking to a small ru southern route using all of this Pioneers, in fact, to sort of clear all the points at one point, or at one time. Barracks up, riflemen arriving, and this is some new skins actually from Mr. Half Track as well. Gives them some slightly different uniforms and all that. Looks a bit better than the other bit in France 1944, at least in my opinion. Might still look for some better armor skins as well. Pioneers heading outwards in a rather large. Fanning movement. In fact, he's gone for six pioneers. My goodness, that's going to be a lot of territory he can seize right off the bat. And he's going for observation posts as well. <coughs> Quite interesting. Going for the munitions. Pioneers engaging engineers. Four pioneers versus three engineers. These three engineers will certainly rule the day. In the meanwhile, it looks like Muspelheim has only gone for one engineer team and is going straight for a lot of riflemen. And Brain carrier with some infantry teams popping in, reconnaissance section heading forwards, and looks like the truck will be heading towards the center. Brain carrier with some chaps in it, heading upwards for, for King George. 
What shall they be doing? And of course, one thing to note, troops in a half track can actually seize territory and due to these sort of curious features of the brain care where the troops inside can actually be harmed, even despite they're looking rather vulnerable. Well, you can actually take it pretty safely, and the brain care will take most of the damage. Pioneers in a full rout. Other pioneers, power. though, after having laid down a lot of barbed wire here, but something like, say, a brain care could easily crush that. And there we go, pioneers coming under fire. In the meanwhile, Panzer Grand is leading a large assault from the north, engaging the reconnaissance section. They are going to need help, and there we go, brain carrier to the rescue with some in Tommies in it. Panzer Grand is setting up defensive positions right here, coming under quite a bit of fire, and the brain care just crashes in. Wrecking the cover. Very, very naughty. Brand carrier right there. Opening up. And Panzer Grenade is charging ahead. Although a bit out in the open. Generally, again, you don't want to stand out in the open. Out in the open tends to be a pretty pl bad place to be since there's absolutely no cover. Meaning you make an excellent target. So unless that's your idea, you're going to be pretty bad off. And skirmish phase has been reached for Hixie, who's immediately set about with all of his pioneers, or most of them. Erecting a creek barracks at the same time. Sanjia is going for the logistic company. He'll probably perhaps go for the armored car rush. Something's already telling me that these two chaps are going for the rather more gimmicky things. And there we go, half tracks, which is rather the second thing of this sort of lots of pioneer strat. To G. Might also involve some grenadiers. Panzer grenadiers retreating. Rifleman moving in the west, spotting a kitten crowd. Kitten crowd needs to get away. While the Tommies continue in the center under the watchful gaze of the Brennan carrier, which has been upgraded with a Vickers machine gun. Pioneers with a flame for holding the line, coming under heavy fire, will have to retreat. Panzer grenadiers moving in to deal with the Rifleman and evict them from the territories of the Wehrmacht. In while Pioneers sort of gathering up off tracks on the move, or at least one first is. And Panzer is engaging the riflemen, although Panzer are slightly in a back cover. Then again, moving in to flank the riflemen and deny them their cover. And it Kettenkrat pushing them about, making things a lot harder for Muspelheim. And Brenko moving in to support the riflemen. Blasting away, forcing the Panzer into a swift retreat. Suppressing some, and there we go. In the meanwhile, the SS Pioneer Force, as it might as well be called at this stage, is moving in with a bit of a half track support so could be Panzer Pioneer I suppose and Rifleman getting burned alive gun down alive and there we go forced to retreat with heavy losses here's his Panzer Pioneer and suffering absolutely no losses now the half track arriving more pioneers arriving as well my goodness really a pioneer force right there lieutenant being spotted out in the open lots of British fire being directed against this though Bren carrier from the north, Bren gunners and other gunners from the south. Armor piercing rounds could be used against this half track if they are available. Otherwise, this Bren carrier needs to get away lest it gets shot to bits. British troops moving in to sort of perhaps cut off the path, but instead get suppressed by the rear machine gun on the half track. My goodness, that's not quite what you want. In fact, they all get pinned down again. A Bren the half tax machine guns should not be underestimated. They can actually suppress pretty nicely. But apparently some are still able to fire. And the Bren carry has taken quite a bit of damage. Second half track moves in. Although not manned. Pioneers pulling back, ready to set up the Kampfkraft Center. Armored cars ready on the field. With the Panzer Jäger command up. Panzer Grenadiers running about. Half tracks hunting down the Bren carrier. Will the Bren carrier make it out of there? Half track taking a bit of fire from the machine gun emplacements. But they don't do an awful lot of damage. Or do they? Do they? Yes, they do. Seems I'm a bit always a bit unsure with that. Rifleman moving in as well. Half track actually taking quite a bit of damage. And the brain care is self repairing. To a jolly good show there. Half track is forced to retreat. And is in fact getting quite a bit banged up now. Armored cast on cut fart. Six, one, six, one, six, six. With the 20mm auto cannon moving in. Lots of mines though. Oh dear. One mine and that armored car will be no more. Panzerian is pushing in towards the center. Pironieren from the south. After it's getting repaired. And again, that's rather why it's a nice thing to sort of use pioneers to man your half tracks afterwards. You can just pull it back and use the pioneers to repair the half track. Pioneers looks like to be jumping back in, although they are awfully wounded with the 21 though. 
Huff. And oh dear, Brenka with armor piercing rounds for its Vickers machine gun tearing through the half track. Half track number one knocked out. Can it do the trick with number two? Nope. Brain Carrier was knocked out, leaving behind only a sorry wreck. But still managed to knock out a half track. That's certainly not a bad start. And second one, Gunners killed. Taking quite a bit of fire. Could end up knocked out as well if it is not careful. And running past all those Vickers machine guns. Quite a lot of damage being directed against it. More armored cars on the field. And looks like some more solid SS Grenadieren are now arriving. With their rifles and all that. Jolly good show. We'll be able to direct some slightly more powerful firepower against the British and American forces. Pioneers getting gunned down and forced to retreat. Riflemen moving in to sort of intercept all the pioneers. Armored car watching over the kitten crap, but now not watching over it, instead moving away. Panzer is moving northwards, it seems. Joining up with the Grenadiers and the armored car. Although that needs some repairs. Panzer Support Command going up. In fact, let's go have a look at some gear and some Panzer Support getting equipped for the Grenadiers. Lots of munitions for some gear though, my goodness. But no Gewehr 43s, no assault rifles or anything like that at all. Seems a bit odd. But now increased squad sizes, but still. I mean, if you have assault rifles, why not get a few in particular? When you're going for increased squad sizes, that basically means since you can get four assault rifles for 75 munitions. That's a pretty good deal. Riflemen and other bits moving about here. Heavy machine gun being set up by Muspelheim. Does he have a weapon support center? Yes, indeed. The British commander has his own field support truck right there on the fuel. Armored cars moving in, opening up on the British troops trying to advance on the victory. Trying to secure the victory point, actually. Most of the victory points are in allied hands. Armored cars moving in, opening up on the British troops. Panzer is retreating. Uh, want to get full, increased squads. Might have wanted to do that before. But the forces of Hixie, the Panzer Pioneer and some Grenadiers moving in. With a bit of Panzer Shrek fun to top it off with. And a Pack 38 expecting some armored trouble from the allies. And her tank half tracks also coming in. Good show right there. And of course, one thing to note when you're playing a two versus two, always have your own anti-tank assets. Do not expect your opponent, your teammate, to do all of the anti-tank work. That's only a recipe for disaster because your opponents will probably figure it out, and then you're going to be in trouble. So again, always ensure you have your own anti-tank assets, and that's what we're seeing here. Good show for Insane Sanjia and Hixie. For the allies, though, it's looking a bit grimmer. 30 cal machine gun though, watching over the victory point. Snipers moving in as well. Only going to be trouble for the Wehrmacht at this stage. And a Greyhound of rhyming and we're seeing... No, no captain actually at this stage. Lots of mines laid down by Muspelheim though, quite fancy that. And I do believe it's time to have a look at Muspelheim. Who's going for an anti-tank gun himself? Good show there. Armored car heading northwards. Not entirely sure what it wants to expect, it seems. Veteran C3 for the pioneers. Rather heavy pioneer support. At the same time, we're seeing a comfortable company going up. Meaning that Iron Saints and Gear will have all four buildings. Which could mean he's probably going for the Panthers at this stage. Since the comfortable company will also give him the comfortable company upgrade. Which means Panther Shake blows access to Panthers. And mine still hanging about. Large force moving in. Northbound Pioneers moving in support with half tracks and some grenades with the Panther Shake. Half track engaging riflemen. Mine hit by the Pioneers doing quite a bit of damage. M8 moving in to support. Can deal with the half track, but not with the anti tank half track though. Sniper moving in, getting some Pioneers. Jolly good show. More riflemen moving in. Focused fire on the riflemen, perhaps. Half track keeping at a distance. Does not want to. Oh, Armor car getting down. keeping at a distance. Does not want to get knocked out on that half track. Pack 38 moving in. And in the south, Panzer is charging ahead with assault rifles. Another the business. Sap has taken quite a bit of fire. And the southern British forces are forced away. 
the north anti-tank gun moves forward and on the moves away pioneers and half tanks decide to do the same good and here running straight into the 30 cal machine gun from Muspelheim opening up all the panzer grenades right out there suppressing them and killing a few good show there but further panzer grenades charging in flanking the heavy machine gun position half tank going in for a bit of fun as well Armored car though on the move as well. I know anti tank assets right here, those. Of course, it doesn't know that, but still, not a bad thing to sue. British forces moving in to support anti tank gun as well. This could prove up to be quite a big battle for either side. Lots of brain guns for the Brits. Lots of death for the Panzer Grenadiers who keep getting suppressed. Anti tank gun moving forwards, but so is the Wehrmacht one as well, and the anti tank half track. Both on the spot. Mortar half track though, it seems some Sunchies, so not just Panthers, but Mortar half tracks, not a bad idea. Sniper gets a pants. No, a pioneer, it looks like. Yes, indeed. Anti tank gun fires away, but misses. It's absolutely nothing. Supply yard upgrades. This is a good thing to see. Trio center as well. Are there any? Yes, indeed, a medic station as well. Good show right there. And we are seeing a Stuart Light tank up for the British. Sir. Pioneers and Grenadiers having a bit of fun there currently so far. Forces off the first SS holding most of the map. Flamethrowers for the engineers. BARs for the riflemen. Jolly good combination. Something is hiding in here, it seems. Panzer Grenadiers could be this setting up a forward barracks. <laughs> Not be a bad assumption, otherwise there's not really much of a reason to have them hanging about in there. Munitions point under attack. What sort of doctrine are we seeing for the Panzer? Absolutely no doctrine for them as of yet. Curious that. British making ready for an assault in the south. Stuart moving in. Yeah. Looks like they are moving in to deal with that. In the meanwhile, in the north, riflemen with some. Reconnaissance support moving in to deal with that. Mines being laid down by Hixie, but he gets spotted and gunned down. Looks like the forces of Sunji are moving in to the wards the south to encounter a British assault. Forward barracks is up, giving defensive operations to those fighting it, and the British forces are forced into a full route. Hey, machine gun and Stuart in the south to hold the line, perhaps. Opening up on the Panzer Grenadiers. And we are seeing a canister round doing quite a bit of damage right there. Armored car advancing or something advancing right into a mine. No, it's the armored car firing away with the kitten crowd spotting. Good show there. In the north half track encounters quite a bit of resistance. Good is moving in. Armored car and more riflemen and an anti-tank on this half track might have seen its last day. Further grenadiers firing opening up on the armored car. But the grenadiers themselves get gunned down in the face of the riflemen. Heavy losses right there. Half track. Barely makes it out of there. Not looking good in the north. Only some pioneers, some with mine sweepers. In fact, to hold the line. Oh wait, there's some grenades there as well. Slightly better looking, but things are getting. Oh dear, the half armor car hits a mine, destroyed engine. Half track though gets blown to bits. Being behind only some rather annoyed-looking pioneers to hold that line. Further pioneers getting rushed in. My goodness. Pioneer Madness. And in the center, the Americans still hold, but coming under fire from mortar half tracks and some Panzer Grenadiers sort of holding out here. Finding away at the riflemen. Mortar rounds flying through the air. And Pioneers getting gunned down. Counter attack by SS Panzer Grenadiers in the north. Lots of assault rifles right there. Riflemen retreating in the Our face of this. Mines getting hit and something gets killed, though I'm not entirely sure where that is. And armor yeah, counting line, but the engineers points. need to retreat. There we go, good show, but five command points for our friend Muspelheim, but no doctrine as of yet. How about Helheim? No doctrine either. A breakthrough has been secured in the south with the help of a stag hound. Pack cleared out. No support for it. British knocking up the repair bunker and securing the forward barracks by the Panzer Elite forces. 
And Stu and Light Tank getting the devil out of there. And Grandia is opening up with a pants check, doing quite a bit of damage to the rear of the Steward Light Tank. Presenting the rear is usually not the thing you want to do against anti tank weapons or any sort of weapon. But looks like the Allied armor will be making out of there. And what is this? The howling of the Nebelwerfer. Heading right there, forcing the Brits into a full route. Mortar rounds joining in. And a lieutenant does not make it out of there. Quite unfortunate, burned alive. <coughs> he is now Lieutenant Crisp. He, heavy machine gun opening up on the Grandiers and Pioneers as they charge forwards. Although looks like only the Pioneers get stopped. Incendia rounds keep falling, and apparently in this case they'll stop only hitting their own troops. Stack are moving forwards. Pioneers and Grandiers coming under quite a bit of fire as a Cromwell now arrives on the field as well, blasting away. Not entirely sure what happened there, my apologies. My apologies. Might have pressed the wrong button. Reporting they have destroyed a German target. But the Cromwell tank gets immobilized. Damaged engine. Oh dear, oh dear. But then again, it's only an anti tank half track. That tiny gun, which was known by the Wehrmacht troops as the door knocker, won't really do much to the Cromwell. Besides that, oh dear, oh dear, this could really look bad for the forces of the 1st SS. Panzer Gren Grenadiers with well, all they can scrape together, moving in armored cars, taking quite a bit of damage, knocked out. Stackhound on the field, Sturm Armory is up though, could be something heavy as being expected. Stackhound driving away, gets hit by what though? Sturm gets shot, yes indeed, Stuk 4 has arrived from the 1st. SS Stug up toiling, which the first SS Panzer Division did have. Not all of the SS Panzer Divisions did have the complements of Stugs. In fact, Nebelwehr for the Veteran C3 coming out of quite a bit of damage though. Another Stug arriving, Greyhound sort of moving about in the Wolf Slayer. This could end up very badly. And damaged engine on both vehicles, and the Nebelwehr gets knocked out. Stuart going to need some darn repairs right there. Could do with some veterancy as well. Securing the north center is rather open at this stage. Very open. Never ever forget to recruit. Jolly good show there. If we can only keep this headset on properly, I'd be a bit more happy. Man, looks like the Americans are making a move in the north as well. The British don't really seem to be achieving much, constantly rocket running back and forth. Sneaky bit right there, well, keeping his captain right there, and so instead of retreating to the headquarters, he's retreating to here. And so running back to the Chia Center, giving him free healing. Not a bad idea, and certainly not bad teamwork right there. Stuk 4 moving in with support from whatever can currently be mustered. That means a few Panzer Grenadiers and Pioneers with flame flows. There's no veteran for the Stuk though. Nelworth on the move, Stuk finally also moving about. No veterancy on the way though, and fireflies have arrived to give the British some quite heavy firepower that will certainly make short work of those Stukes if they're not careful. Sturmgeschutz 4 and the Nebelberg once more fires away. Hoping to catch those Americans in the north. Anti tank gun moving forwards. No armor depot for the Americans though. Nebelberg first seems to be hitting absolutely nothing. Grand is moving in to clear out that anti tank gun. And looks like anti-tank gun will shortly be cleared up. There we go. Will they be recruiting it? Sherman on the way. Oh, wait. The tank depot was in the British side of the base. Might as well use that spot. Sherman coming under a bit of fire. Stooks need to move in. Another. No, that's a machine gun. And there we go. Stook moving in to clear from the front. Oh no, the Stook shows its rear. Very bad Stook. You don't have a turret, so you can't engage like that. Always stick to the front. Grandia is taking heavy losses. Sniper sneaking about. Another Stuke moving in. Sherman needs to get away. 
Pioneers forcing the rifle in the way it looks like, and looks like the British have made another push here, but were forced away as the first SS got its Panther up Tylon on the spot, or Panzer up Tylon more precisely. With a few Panthers, or what? Hang on. Aren't there supposed to be two? Wait a minute. Oh, dearie me, he lost one. He lost his Panther, it looks like, to those. Sappers with all their Piats, quite unfortunate. Cromwell engaging the Panther, but over repairing, in fact, saves it from the first hit rather nicely. Oh dear, Panther number two could easily end up knocked out. And the Firefly is on the spot, ready to put the fire in the Panther's rear. Cromwell moving in as well. Who shall be the one? There we go. Panther is no more out of control, veering madly, hitting. The crumble one last time before crashing into those locks. Not quite fortunate for the first SS losing its Panthers that quickly, my goodness. And I do believe it's time to have a look at Hixie again. I do believe it's also time for the mid-game analysis. What is the current situation? Well, currently not too good for our friends of the Wehrmacht, of the Panzer Elite, who have rather tried going for the rather heavily gimmicky strategies, but rather never really managed to penetrate that far into enemy territory. And as you might have noticed, they're in fact taking quite some heavy losses because while gimmicky forces can present a certain strength, they're not really balanced in the sense they can handle a lot thrown at them. And they also tend to be rather fragile in a sense that they can't really last long and usually go up in a puff of smoke. And as you might have noticed, they don't really achieve that much. I mean, pioneers with virtual 3 yes, they seem tough, but at the same time without something stronger, they won't last long. And he only otherwise has two infantry teams, as you might have noticed, they're not really achieving much either, because again, not much in support. Half tracks gone, there's only some Stukes and a Neville Werfa, but the Stukes not veterancy. And they're also having a bit of trouble actually pushing forward. Same with the Neville Werfa. Although it is veterancy free, which actually gives it some nice bonuses. But still they need something a bit more direct and support for those grenadiers and pioneers, and they can't just quite achieve it. And certainly no veterancy either. Mr. Sanjir went sort of, let's get lots of pantograms, let's get armored, get armored cars. And then what happens with those armored cars? They get blown to bits. What happens with those pantograms? They get shot down because so things like cover apparently doesn't exist in their world. So that's rather a main problem. I, a lot of resources get thrown out the window and of course building a lot of buildings right off the bat. And then not really having resources for units so they don't quite achieve the same mass of units that the allies do they can who don't really rush for the buildings and instead it res use the resources on troops giving them the stronger field presence and that's rather what's biting the forces of the first assist that is Sanjia and Hixi rather in the arse. Pania sort of hanging about in the south though we'll have to see on this goes and then let's return to the fight no doctrine as of yet we're 20 minutes into the game and absolutely no one apparently has chosen a doctrine that certainly belongs to one of the more peculiar sites in the game. Stuart getting repaired, other Stuart not moving forward. Stuart coming under fire, Panzerschek and Sturmgeschutz. Stankar moving in though. And what was that? A bit of explosion right there. Artillery called in on the Nebelwerfer, Nebelwerfer simply cleared out. Seems a bit excessive then, no. And looks like he has gone for Scorched Earth, calling in the Sector Artillery, although right there, I'm not sure, sure it will do much. British moving forwards, but retreating. Certainly good move there and keeping his troops alive. Nice unit preservation from Helheim. And a Clive has arrived on the field, bombarding the Wehrmacht positions with deadly rocket fire. And blowing those grenades, a new one, or several new ones. Sector artillery in the north as well. Was that what, what was that then? Oh dear. But Stukes are advancing for the fatherland. Pioneers getting killed. Others getting reinforced alongside those grandiers. Oh, so very quiet. Firefly and Sherman moving in. Firefly quite an impressive tank still, although it's mounted on the far Sherman chassis, it still has the 17 pounder gun, quite nice. 
And so of course you shouldn't be engaging it directly with axes, some in particular, not panthers, but still some do, and then proceed to call it a glass cannon. Thing is though, most allied armor when going up with the heavier German armor is pretty much going to fall into the category glass, since German tanks generally have the better armor and the better guns. And in German Fireflies case, just better armor though. The Firefly 17 pounder gun is pretty impressive, but again, some people do seem to behave a bit oddly when they get out of armor. They sort of seem to think, well, I have Panthers, let's charge ahead for the Fatherland. Oh, wait, I'm not German. And head machine gun and going up to protect the center victory point. Sneaky, sneaky, coming under a bit of fire though. Snipe, old snipe, way out. I can live in the to cover the area. Engagement in the north. Booby traps finally going about, although I can't help but feel this is awfully late. From some yet yeah, ought to have done this a lot earlier. I mean, going for this scorched earth at this stage, it's just too damn late. I was maintaining a bit of damage right there, forced away. British forces once more charging it. Panther team number two has arrived. And I believe this would pretty much constitute, alongside those others, a full Panther section. Or platoon. Stuart's not really achieving much either. No veterans for them at all. No machine guns or anything. Can't help but feel that's a bit tragic. And moving in to deal with that machine gun emplacement, anti tank gun opening up. Panther's taking quite a bit of damage. Tank destroyers now arriving on the field as well. More Allied armor quite arriving from the 3rd and 11th armored divisions, proving a bit of problem for the 1st SS, who is rather lacking in a sense, and lacking in actual troops to support them. Panther getting repaired by the Pioneers. And more grenadier teams are arriming on the field, but still no veterancy for the Sturm Geschütz. Not even veterancy one, which will decrease the damage taken, which I'd rather describe as a rather vital up veterancy upgrade for any armor you get as the Wehrmacht. And that is no understatement. And the British troops are once more on the move alongside the Americans. Still, very nice coordination of units and of assets. I mean, keeping the captain here so they can basically just retreat to the trio center. Absolutely brilliant. Rockman moving in to engage the forces right up here. Do we have grenades? Yes, indeed. Forcing the pioneers away. Then the Rockman retreat in the face of the grenadiers. Patrick grenadiers. Tommy's on the move, heading towards the center. Fireflies moving into support, opening up on the Sturm Geschütz again. No veteran team, meaning they're much easier targets. And finally, going for a doctrine in the 27th minute of the game. He's going for Blitzkrieg, but why the bloody hell didn't he go for it earlier? Just an absolute waste. He could have used the Stu 42 against that huge clump of British troops a lot earlier, but no, apparently not. Storms could also have been helpful, but no, again, apparently not. Grenades charging ahead, getting snapped, getting gunned down. <coughs> Grenades locked up then, but the grenade misses. Artillery called in. But the Grenades don't care about that. The machine gun, though, stops them, suppresses them. In fact, Panthers moving in, opening up, and looks like they might finally secure the central victory point. Firefly off against the Panthers, and Stuk even moving in. But Kalaipi Barrage right in the middle of everything, turning in this into a huge mess. Men dying, screaming, Panthers firing, Stuke sort of wondering, wait, hey, mate, where's my veterans? He, you stupid bastard. And then getting away as the anti-tank guns open up. And then getting flanked by tank destroyers who have been killed in reserve. And we are seeing Allied War Machine, meaning they can be recovered, my goodness. Sneaky there. Certainly going to keep the Wehrmacht forces on their toes. And all the rest are getting reinforced. Quite a bit of manpower. Perhaps he's hoping to call in a tiger. Tiger. And the Firefly coming under fire from the Pack 38. But the Pack 38 is coming under fire itself. British troops moving in. Artillery being summoned in on the field as well. What? How and where though? Cannot say. Again, still no veterancy for the Sturm Geschütz. And a Stu 42 now getting called in. Still no veterancy though, but. Might have some luck against those British infantry clumps. There you go. Stu 42 misses. 
Or at least the British troops dodge it somehow. And the stoop gets knocked out. Again, no veterans here at all. I can't help but feel how much I must stress that. No veterans here for the armor. Panthers getting repaired again. Not achieving much so far on these Panthers, and that's already two Panther teams. That is means 2,000 manpower, and he still isn't getting any traction out of them. I mean, that's pretty bad. And another Kaliber Barrage, more artillery. Creating a nice fat screen of it, in fact. I know we have a captain here. Who has access to what? Sector artillery and Panther Battle Group. Let's return to Muspelheim. More allied armor moving in, more tank destroyers arrive and run towards the north one. The rest of the Wehrmacht and the SS are keeps, well, SS entirely is supposed to be occupied in the center. Panthers moving forwards once more, Stu 42, quite damaged, pack 38 ready to pack, coming fire. M10s advance, and apparently there's hold fire on that pack, that's actually not bad, but now opening up on the rears of the tank destroyers. Grenadiers take quite a bit of fire, knocking out one. Snipe opening up on the Pack 38. Pack 38 needs to retreat most swiftly. And Tech Destroy advancing. Advancing. Grenadiers hanging out. And might get squished or shot to bits. Looks like it's squished and it, it is. Pioneers continuing. Right here. Advancing. While Riflemen are forced away by a force of Panzer Grenadiers. Only one Panzer Grenadiers to team stopping all of this. And again, those Pioneers moving in from the rear might also be a hint of what. Might cause the retreat. Mortar opening out once more. Pan a new one. And the Panthers crash forwards. Panzer is getting sniped. Veterans see three for this sniper. 20 kills. Absolutely nasty. Machine gun emplacement getting hit. Panthers advancing. Stug advancing as well. Hoping to knock out those fireflies. But a Calliope Barrage moves in once more. Doing quite some extraordinary damage to all of this. More Stug. No, Stu 42 then moves in. Still no kills though. Seems a bit tragic. Gets hit by anti tank guns. Knocks out one crew member. Finally scoring a kill for the fatherland. Looks like the Stu was once more knocked out. Anti tank gun cleared out actually. Quite impressive. Sniper continuing to fire away. Can run. In fact, when cloaked, when they're 23. And dodges the Stu 42 shell. Stu 42 almost cleared out by the anti tank gun. Oh dear, oh dear. And there we go, Stu 42. Hexes keeps suffering the losses, keeps bleeding the manpower. And looks like Mr. Muspelheim might be preparing for a Pershing. Certainly not lacking in armor for the Allies. Going in to perhaps clear out the north again. Commandos dropping in apparently for the quick Enemy wizard. Unit down. And Pioneers of Grenadiers getting slaughtered in the center. Panthers once more there to hold the line. Panthers once more getting shot up. And what is this? A Tiger has finally arrived for Hixie from a Schwerer from the first. Yes, 101st Schwerer. It's his Panzerabteilung opening up, finding a way. Oh dear, anti tank gun rather exposed. But it survives the first shot. Lots of Fireflies pointing back at the Tiger. This Tiger doesn't seem to have much luck at all. There we go, anti tank gun cleared out. But Tiger was still under quite a bit of fire. Grenadiers moving into support. <laughs> Allied armor rather clumped up. One, a nice Hummel barrage right there could actually do quite a bit of damage, I expect. But there we go, already retreating. Some units have been rather depleted in the face. Well, not the best of the SS, I'd say. At this stage. Fireflies opening up. Tiger holding the line. Panthers getting repaired, although this tank is going to need some repairs as well. And commandos just Enemy keep dropping in. Booby traps going off. Looks like something was blown to bits there. Not sure what though. Panther moving in to save the day. And then the Wolverines move in to flank it, but Panther and Tiger moves in to support the other Panther. And looks like this. Tank destroyer might get knocked out. And artillery right on this spot. Oh dear, oh dear. 
Actually doing a quite bit of nasty damage. Commander securing the northern victory point. Oh dear. And the Panthers try to salvage things, but there's absolutely not enough infantry to support them. Too much has been spent on infrastructure and armored cars that were blown away. And the commandos get shot up by the Panthers. We've still not really secured much in actually kills and we're rather redeeming the high cost. Nor has the Tiger. No posing as yet for the Americans. For Hurlheim, more artillery is on the order of the day. Looks like the remaining heavy armor is getting prepared for one last f attack. Panther and Tiger. GG from the Allies. Rather figuring they won the match. And they probably have. That's not much going to do for the Axis to win back this. But they will not give up. Or apparently. Tangier will be not moving in as Panthers to support this assault. And Tiger gets shot up most tragically. And there we go, Hixie retreats. Tiger lost. And so is the retreat from here. The first is this unit right here will be blown to bits. More commanders dropping in the north. And a GG from Tangier. Panthers watching over everything gets knocked out. And there we go. Game over for the Wehrmacht and the Panzer Elite. Hixi and Sanjia have lost the fight. And what a fight it has been. But what can we learn from this? Well, gimmicky things might work somewhat in 1 versus 1 but in 2 versus 2 they can rather easily end up biting you in the ass particularly the armored car one for the pants elite i can't tell you how many times i've seen that fail rather disastrous and in this case again we saw it it can't really fight a prolonged fight it needs something to keep up supporting but there's nothing in particular when the other chap has gone for lots of pioneers although in this case he's probably lost most of them in half tracks which do all right but then again get pushed back and they had absolutely nothing to actually defend what they took in the beginning rather major problem right there and they meanwhile the allies took a much, much more steady approach and just pushed them back to this area and thus kept them drained of victory points to the end plus there were some rather odd things in all four sides basically were pretty slow in getting any doctrinal choices in particular the axis should have gone for that earlier so they could have gotten something a bit more aggressive, offensive, and taking some territory, in particular this victory point, and at least given themselves some more time, but they never managed that. Plus, no veterans for the assault guns. Not good either. The main problem for the Panzer League player who seems to be calling in more Panthers is, well, basically, he built too many buildings too fast. That's meaning he spent too much on the infrastructure, rather on the units on the field, and that rather also resulted in him not having as much of a presence on the battlefield as he could have which rather than fell on Hixie to do most of the fighting which he had problems with again since most of his forces were pioneers <coughs> so rather a set of strategies from either player that didn't just quite mesh properly and some other problems plus good teamwork though from the allies in particular I'd rather like to see this tree ascender with the captain nearby so all British forces would retreat to this very good right there so there you go hope you enjoyed it if you did why not subscribe to your friends and if you didn't well why not send in a replay of your own this is Impil Dean saying cheers